Live from the Scripps Studios, this is 10 News. Totals that we picked up today, you can see those numbers right there, Chula Vista under a tenth of an inch. In uh, San Diego, a hundredth of an inch. And then La Mesa picked up 0 .03. So if you're going to be walking with us Are this weekend, it's going to be fantastic. So you don't have to worry about 10 o'clock. And then we're back with more news at 11. A lot of people that I don't even know sending me messages that you're going to be on site, 10news.com. Meantime, police are now saying 99 Subaru Outback, similar to the one you're looking at, leading to the driver's arrest. The man who killed his girlfriend then stuffed her body in a suitcase downtown is now waiting to find out how long he will spend in prison. Today, on this very issue, saying Sanctuary City has released at least 142 gang members across the U.S., making it easy for them to commit all forms of violent crime. So, clearly this battle, far from over, will continue to monitor the situation and bring you any updates as we get them. And the Live Center, Ariel. But right now it's pretty quiet. We're winding down. We have the seven o'clock show, and then okay. after that we only have the eleven. So it'll just get get uh, fewer and fewer people. But all the reporters are stacked the way that we are throughout the day. So there's more people over there because that's the night shift crew. Everybody fills up these desks during the day because that's the morning shift and the day crews. Photographers sit over here and edit. If you notice, we all have computers. Everything's tied in kind of probably like what you have at school too. So every script that's written goes directly to the teleprompter out there. Everybody can see and edit from any script from every computer. Um, our editing stations used to be over here in these bays, but now we're in an open environment where everybody is together. With communication is open the whole time where everybody can talk with each other. and. Uh, you don't have to yell across the room or call somebody or wonder where they are. You can you can get instant information. The desk is back here, the assignment desk. As you can tell, all the sound goes up against that wall. Um, and they take in, they're monitoring scanners, they're monitoring everything that's going on throughout the day. Um, producers sit up in, in these front areas here. You're going to be sitting with Michael a little bit later, Michael Rosin, who's our 7 o'clock producer. And we'll kind of, you know, talk you through a few things. But uh, let's go over this one. Michael Rosin's our 7 o'clock producer. Hi, guys. Hi. <clears throat> Hi. I'm Gian. What's your name? Gian. Gian, nice to meet you. Mm -hmm. Jared. Jared, yeah. nice to meet you. Michelle. Connie. Yeah. Hi, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you all. Yeah. Thank you. Thank so, you. Forgive Thank me you if I don't remember everyone's name. Yeah, no worries. <laughs> Michael's going through the last part of the rundown here, and he sets up the show throughout the day to kind of figure out what producers, what stories we're going to do, what's important, and writes the whole show. He writes it very, very well too. So um, that kind of is what our rundown looks like uh, for the seven o'clock show. It goes by when when you see it, it'll go by really, really fast. Yeah, he'll be amazed how quickly it mm -hmm. goes by. Yeah. What does a time mean? Um, for this column. or this? The back time column. What is that indicating? Yeah. So, so, so this is the actual rundown of the show, and every element has a line and has time assigned to it based on how long the scripted content is for that. So, this is the the computer keeps track as we start technically at 6:59:45, okay. and then based on the content that we have in here, this is where we should be hitting. Um, if we're on time for each of the things. So you, you'll see, because you'll sit with me in the booth, um, as we go along, um, it, it'll adjust, I can adjust based on where we are over or under during the show to keep us out on time, because we have to get out at 7.26.40. There's actually automation that snatches control back from us, so whether we're done or not, the it's, show is yeah, over at yeah, seven twenty six. Yeah. Oh, that's why when they when they sometimes they, they keep talking and then they, it just cuts You'll off. You'll see it cut yeah. off. That's exactly what yeah. happened. Yeah. Right, I've seen it several times. Right, because we're at, we're hubbed out, which means it's automated, not in this building. Mm -hmm. So Indianapolis will literally gotcha. take take it away from us and roll and roll the break in the next store and the next show at that time. So it behooves us to be nice, clean, and done mm -hmm. at that point. So that's kind of. The big thing I do during the show is keeping it keeping it on time mm -hmm. so that it all and it goes smoothly exactly. Let's move this way. We'll let Michael. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. We'll, we'll be spending more time together. We'll see you later. <laughs> 
Sarah's one of our interns. She doesn't do a whole lot here. Um, so, you know, nice to I'm meet Jared. you. I'm the nighttime executive producer. <laughs> Thanks a lot. I'm Gian. Nice to meet you. Carmen. Nice to meet you. Yeah, right. Nice to meet you. you. So anything from like 3 o'clock on, Sarah's in charge of all that uh, as the executive producer. She's working with people. They're handing off stuff throughout the day, advising on what's going on. But ultimate decisions that come down for anything that's in our 11 o'clock show basically go through Sarah and our news director head and, and so um, big decision maker here. Kind of a big deal. Wow. I'm kind of, yeah, that's what you're saying. Doesn't do much here. Yeah. But. Kind of a big deal. <laughs> 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 it's for real. Yeah. Um, Daniel's my co-anchor at 5 o'clock. Hi, Lindsay. Happy to meet you. Nice to meet you. It's chilly, so I have to put on afterwards. You'll see Kimberly uh, out there of later. Of course. You're my favorite. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I know. Sorry, Steve. <laughs> Steve, you're my favorite. Can I see you today again? Hey, Ariel. Hi. 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 Smile. Okay. Here, get him behind the live center. Ariel. Um, he, he was playing live center earlier today, so that's our digital team over here, and so we have several people who are constantly putting stuff on the web and social and you name it. And so, Mark, are you solo tonight? Uh, yeah. Yeah, so he's the only guy who's doing that right now. So that's a lot of work. I mean, everything that we put on the web, yeah, it's it's pretty amazing. So It's constant. Um, here's Kimberly. Sorry. That's all right, Kimberly. You didn't have to. I'm Jared. Nice to meet you. I'm Gian. Hi, Gian. <laughs> Gary. Nice Gary. Oh, you. you're tall. What is it? You're Carmi. tall. <laughs> nice to meet you. Oh, nice to meet you. I remember meeting you at the year of 1997. Oh. We were doing a mall. Uh, Channel 10 Live News Live with Bill Griffin. And oh I have pictures. <laughs> That's wonderful. I got the pictures with Mike and Michelle. Mike Ambrose before he died. Oh, oh that's Michelle. 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 Nice to see you. I am so happy to meet you again. <laughs> oh, how nice. We're to starstruck, you. right? <laughs> well, we're happy to have yeah, you. No, that's no, so no. nice that you met Steve yes, at the Steve. Science Fair. Yeah. And Thank you're you. journalism students at Grossmont. So oh, good. we'll have lots of questions for us after the news. That's morning. a good, good mm -hmm. program. And Great. Got a lot of technical stuff. And uh, are you still like married to um, <laughs> uh, Ray, Ray? Billy Ray. Billy yes, Ray, you still married to him? Yes. Are you? Yeah, I remember him. No idea. <laughs> <laughs> Obviously, I'm not posting <laughs> enough. <laughs> no, 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 because I remember <laughs> you were, he was down there with you that time. Yes. Michelle, what are you? Yeah. Michelle, Michelle. Hey, easy. easy. And what? Who goes with whom? Um, they all go to we all go to Grossmont oh, College. We're all okay. three. I'm uh, school thing. going to SDSU next year, next fall. Oh. So. I'm That's going in a couple too. years. <laughs> I went to San Francisco State. We were like little competitors in the broadcast <laughs> departments. It was really great. We would work together and then we'd be like, oh, San Diego has that. We have this. <laughs> it was great. Little did I know I would end up here. So, wow. I've been happy ever since. We don't really have really time for this. Yeah. Do you touch up any guests that come in? Do you have makeup on? No. 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 Oh, so you do your own makeup? Yeah. 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 So yeah. People no, sometimes Steve does it. Lot. They kind of learn to get their own powder. And some of the women, like, they, you know, we become friends, and so they go back and use mine with me and stuff. Wow. You know, I've shared before, but yeah, we don't, we don't have anything. <laughs> Just wondering, because you always look yeah. perfect. So you're on screen. <laughs> see you out there. See you. Thank All right. you. I guess I'll talk to you when you're done. Yeah, I'll be on. I'll see you. We'll meet at the break. Watch your step. Thank you. We're on the head of the studio. Oh. 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 There she is. Okay. Watch your step here. Shoot. Okay. Oh. 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 Angelica, our meteorologist. Hi, Angelica. <laughs> Hi. No, we were in Ohio. So, our studio um, used to be much smaller than this. We actually used to be over there in that studio. This one, we created, when HD came along, we got this set where it's just mm -hmm. much, much bigger. Um, and you'll get an opportunity to come in here for the second 15 minutes of the half hour to be able to see what it's going on in here. All our cameras are robotic, which means we have an operator in there who's running everything. We used to have a person on every single camera. That's no longer the case. Uh, we have one person in here who will be our studio guide who will kind of you know direct us on what camera we're looking at and stuff like okay. that. But we used to have four or five people in here other than us. 
the, the talent um, wow. who were you know in here with us, and now they're, it's all automated by one person you'll see in the control room. Can I be that one person? <laughs> <laughs> what are all those wires over there? What are they? It just it, they running. They're for different things, from okay. computers to you name it to, to everything. These, everything in here. Everything in here is electronic in some way or another. Okay. And we're about to switch out all these lights real soon. They're, they're, Two they're LED lights? Uh, huh? Are you going to convert it to LEDs. LED? LEDs? I don't know if we're going to go to LEDs or not, but I know that they're going to fix it because we, we use this whole set. You know, oh, okay. constantly doing stuff and walking around. So. How often do they have to move lights around? Like not that often. Set, Once yeah. they're set in positions, we try not to move. Right. We try only to go to specific positions. So, yeah. Let's go to the control room real quick. And we'll come back out. We'll talk with Angela. All right, we'll see you later. After the show. Everybody's so nice. See, see if you want. Everybody's so nice. Take a break. You want? <laughs> you mean on the show? If you want. <laughs> Why don't you take a break? I'll, I'll oh, you want to anchor the show? Oh, my oh. goodness. Did you bring your makeup in? In today's forecast, <laughs> it's going to be in trouble. Well, it's going to happen soon. <laughs> Alright, here we go. Anybody wants to do any pull-ups? Sure. <laughs> that would help. Okay. Okay, you guys first. Still right, this is our director, who will Hi. be directing the show today. These are our friends from Grossmont College. Hi. Lee will be our studio operator. Nice to meet you. I'm Gian. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Hello. Good, good. Hello, Hi, I'm Gian. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Nice to move between newscasts. Get the old blood going again. Yes. Uh, so the whole show has been set up by Michael Rosin. Uh, he works with, in conjunction with Frank to kind of let him know, here's what, what I want to do, the shots that are set up. Frank automates all that as the show goes along. Ro kind of, Rose then will, will take direction from Frank to kind of make the show go smoothly. <laughs> Lee Bob doesn't do anything except the other be out there in the studio <laughs> and waste our time. No, he, we are nothing without this guy. And then Michael will sit over here, so that's kind of the setup. Uh, as I mentioned, if Frank has an opportunity, he'll tell you kind of what he's doing throughout the show. Hopefully nothing goes crazy. But, um, sure. You know. This looks complicated. Yeah, well, yeah, I guess, yeah, sure, it could be. Um, it used to be that the crew would uh, be around 12 people. Mm -hmm. Yeah, people who did graphics, yeah, yep. people who did audio, yeah. wow. technical director, director. Now it's shrunk down to about three or four. Mm -hmm. So wow. it's all software driven. Steve is right. Basically, the producer works all day, and I take the producer's, producer's vision, and I code the show. And it spits out and comes out on these monitors, and I execute the show. That's my job. Uh, Rose, who sits here, deals with the body. I'm, I'm just taking Steal a break. Go <laughs> 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 see me out there. So, Steve, before computers, how many people did it take to run this? Oh, oh, God. Right, there was about 12, 13. Oh, oh my gosh. Yeah. And four, four to five people out in the studio. Cameras, yeah. uh, stage well, manager, uh -huh. sometimes yeah, a teleprompter yeah. operator, sometimes I mean, a lighting person at the time. Lighting back person. Back the yeah, oh. so. So yeah, we, audio yeah. person, yeah. we do more with less now. I mean, that's yeah. kind of the yeah. way things are in every Productive. business, and every ours business. is not alone. It's true. Yeah. 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 So and behind Steve, yeah. oh, sorry. Go ahead. No, Frank. Behind Steve, you have the left uh, big monitor here. That's preview, so that's what I see before I put it on the air, which is the right-hand side monitor. Uh, what's the delay? Mm -hmm. uh, there's no delay. It's, I, I just see what's going on before I actually take it. Oh, okay. So what you see on, on the air is what's going to be on the right-hand side. Uh -huh. right. All the monitors above here are just all sources that I need to know where and what they're doing. Our competition's up top, our cameras on the left here, oh, wow. graphics, uh, effects banks, cameras down here, all kinds of stuff that I always have to keep watching out for throughout the show. God. When I started, I think there were two half-hour shows. We had yeah. 900 people. And so now, now how many? <laughs> many? So now we have so much more than that. We do two and a half in the morning, right. and an hour at midday, and it's right. three and a half, in an hour at four, four, four and a half, an hour at five. Uh, five I don't deal with commercials. Six and seven. Seven, seven. 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 By seven. Area seven hours a day. Okay. So we just do yeah. news, so quite a we hit a button, and it goes to the commercial break, then it goes back. Excellent. So we did less news with more people than we do now. So how many people were fired and replaced by robots? Quite a few. <laughs> yeah, over the years, uh, quite a few. And continues to be. I mean, if yeah. you think about it, our reporters now produce, write, edit. So we can have a reporter who can be an editor, a reporter, and a photographer all in one. That's wow. one person doing three jobs. Yep. And if you want to, you can say four because all the social media stuff they have to do in the web right. as well. Yeah. So one person doing four different jobs. It's, it's a whole different Pretty industry. intense. And you sweep up after the news. And then I do. I clean the toilet. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm going to take, I'm going to go. 
and get ready for the show. Okay. Same so here in the back. These guys. Quiet. Will, okay. Yeah. Do you do you want me? Do you want to just keep them together and we'll do like first segment here? Yes. And I'll bring them out for the second. After the second. We'll segment. do that. After Great. the first we'll segment. Just, okay. okay. So just kind of hang up against the yeah. wall. Like I said, yes. if these guys have an opportunity, they'll kind of explain Thank what's going so on. Much. But for the most part, just bring over that yeah. no, it's a working yeah. environment. So somebody can sit next to me. Thank you. We will be quiet. I'm quitting. Basically, Frank has pre-programmed the entire show in his computer, and he's going to execute it on the timeline. When, um, hey, Michael. Yeah, Frank. Uh, just so you know, we're missing that uh, wall still for wall six one thirty. I don't see the still in there. What? For the Cal Jet. I stuck it in there. Did you? All right, I'll stick it's it in the again. Left. I guess you guys get bored sometimes you work out of Also, yeah, they, they do that. Well, you see, I can see the studio so, up so there. Yeah. yeah. So I'm running these cameras, cameras and they're all shot. robotic, so I just try to run there. Me over. Yeah. When you say I'll you're running the camera, yeah. just oh, uh, automated, yeah. just, yes, yes. but I'll not move. actual. Yeah, I'll show you. I'll move one of them right now. What are you uh, measuring? Uh, I mean, you see there's oh, Steve standing there, but I have to, I'm moving this one camera. Mm-hmm. See, so, yeah, you know what you want to do? It's all, Sheesh. all robotic editing. I know. And then I can watch him here, oh, wow. but see, I have to make sure I don't hit anybody. <laughs> oh, that's kind of what job that's Oh, she's operating it. Right, right. Oh, the robot. The, yeah. the camera is moving. Yeah, so I'll, I'll have to put it <laughs> oh back. Oh my god! So, so you're the camera is, uh, yeah. for See, the. This is the yeah, one, yeah. two, three, and then, then there's one back here. That's for my my uh, thing. But there's one, two, three. This, <laughs> that's camera yours. Three right here. That's all lit up. I see. I'm do that, but I see I. Yeah. It's all robotic, yeah, so I, I punch the button, is, but uh, the, 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 the anchors are the fine to the producer, so I'm inside the puppet. So it's framed up. But all these little shots are all preset. I already I made them. Yeah, I made them. You know, and I could resave them because I use them all the time. So there. So Kimberly and Steve. Yeah. Right. So we're gonna start. This is our one guy. Everybody has a blank. Michael Ross and put this together. Frank all. Hi, Allison. Yeah. Programmed it in, but see, I have to look for my you camera shot. It says, Tony, camera one is wide. So I oh, we got a truck! My that camera one, one, like one two, three. Wow, this so is I know, like a real TV station. Video left I wide, so I can show this. So that's what I'm doing now on camera out. one. <laughs> Getting ready for that right there. Um, right, so so as soon go. as they sit there, I'll Kimberly getting ready. get her ready. Yeah. Yeah. And so and I can all, I also, I also my have regular have their own in their ear. So then my next one will be camera oh, one, this wall oh, eight. Okay. Then I have camera three, camera one again. So, one, Rose, two. Be yeah. before you did this, mm -hmm. they trained you too, right? Before. Oh, yes. Yeah. Yeah. I, yeah, actually, <laughs> I was here when I used to <laughs> be behind the cameras. Okay. Yeah, so okay. I did do that yeah. a long time ago. Yeah. And it just kind of melded into this. And you kind of have to, you know, mm -hmm. learn it. you got to start. Oh, yeah. yeah. That's good. Or else. Indeed. Yeah. Not as stressful. So actually, all these particular jobs, I've done it individually. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. How long have you been here? Yeah. Oh, over 30 years. Yeah. Oh, I thought six that? months. <laughs> I, I had dark hair back in the day. You guys are the first thing I'm going to bring out. Did you go to school, school for this? I, not really. I went to broadcast school and I have a license, but I, I started in radio, is what I did. Oh, okay. yeah. So you're a stuff. radio broadcast. Yes. You have your own uh, uh, show. <laughs> I did. Well, yeah, not nice. long, yeah, 30 years ago. But, um, but, uh, but same in San Diego? Yes. Yes. At Kogo, KPRI a long time ago. Yes, that was a long time ago. Um, but then uh, when I got a job here, you know, they had the audio booth. So you don't do that anymore. No. So this would be an old bo board like this. Yes, yeah, that's what I'm so used to seeing. So then they would, uh, you know, all the engineers would do either the camera, the audio, out on the floor, like Lee is out there, Frank is uh, back in the back recording the stuff, but now it records all on uh, the computer. Automated. Yeah. So let's see here. So as the show goes through, 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 through each one of these, and see he's he has these little these little code and every one. Free show heads. That's free show heads for prompters. So that's that's what goes first before it goes to the big screen to the next. Correct. See that preview. Yeah. See that? Uh, mm -hmm. They have to read. Mm -hmm. so oh, sure. okay. I have to make sure that is loaded up too. Okay. So my job at this point. Bro, don't let us bother you. Okay. I'm not. Yeah. Don't worry. I'll do it. Yeah. Thank you. I'll just focus it forward. Yes, I'll focus <laughs> forward. A little plus minus here to see whether I'm heavy or light. Uh, and they see I have my. Sure oh, they're getting ready. Music. 
the reporters yeah, are in, which Allison is, is. and yeah. then just keep it yeah. communicating with the anchors. So I also have to give time keys to the. So I take it. Allison is, is on location. Yeah, Allison is at Hoover High School. In San Diego for thirty years. So there's only mm -hmm. one library. Mm -hmm. the okay. For this particular oh, show, oh sure. Yes. Filipino Other nice shows, people. all the time. <laughs> 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 this, this one's for Allison. Um, but uh, what brings you in here? Are you in class or something? Yes, my kids. That is ours. Hello, 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 hello. We got a bunch. Oh, we got one on top of yes. one. Yes. Uh, uh, we got one in Solidad. We got one in Solidad. And Saturday. they said they're going to call with five people, so I came, I came with a group. Sure, where's he go to school? <laughs> Where did she go to school? Um, in the Philippines. <laughs> oh, so you came over here. Yeah. To, oh, nice. Finally tonight, America Strong, the little girl, not surprisingly, the most patient of all. She's the little girl seen by millions online. Capitals forward Brett Conley right there spotting six-year-old Kaylin Moxley himself behind the glass. He tries to throw her a puck and then listen to the answers. <laughs> that kid grabbed the first puck from her. Now look at, look at her face. Look at this. Uh -huh. Is that the saddest? He's going to throw one more. She is devastated. <laughs> we were two. The hockey player tries again. And, and now that kid steals the puck. Wow. wow. Last, signaling to little Keelan one more chance. He finds a third puck and this time it's all hers. Uh, yeah, look at her though. Is that all worth it right there? Oh, my heart's melting now watching this little girl. Hey, that father orchestrated that. Little Keelan's family telling us Oh, the father orchestrated. I'm glad it's the dad. She was lucky to get that puck. Keelan sending us this message. Hi, David. Telling us what it was like to watch the boys go first. I feel happy for the boys. Because the boys were like happy because they got the puck. And, but I didn't really feel happy for myself yet. She's honest. And when her moment finally came. I felt so happy. I felt amazing. I felt awesome. I didn't know. I just, I was so happy. And this weekend, she'll be right there at the glass again. Because the owner of the Capitol says. He watched as that little girl had to wait behind the boys. Oh, nice. This weekend, it'll be Keelan right First. there in the front row in his seats. Yay. Thank you, Keelan, for that message, and you deserve those front row seats. I'm David Muir. I hope to see you right back here tomorrow. Until then, have a good evening. Good night. Big problems for a local airline, CalJet, leaving San Diego travelers scrambling. And farewell to a local institution, the salon closing after more than 50 years. Ten new starts in 60 seconds. It's my Wow. So yeah, so you press the yes. red red button. Yes. Oh. That's for the brakes. We're in a commercial right now. Yeah. Yeah. Is it uh, pretty stressful because it's always time constraint? It's always watching the time. Um, uh, we adjusted. But we are nuts because we know time. Yes, indeed. Right. Okay. Definitely. The show starts on time. Yeah. Five minutes and you've missed five What minutes. happens if there's no power? You've got your own generator. Oh, they got a backup. Yeah. 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 Okay. How about yeah. the computers if they go <laughs> down? Mm -hmm. What happens if the computer goes down? We have guys that take care of that. Yeah. yeah. It's easy tonight. I Allison's know. on the truck, so there's no delay. We also have back hat technology. Yeah, I have to make sure it's So then I have to cue them early so that there's not a long gap on the air. What's that? Yes. Wow, you're good. <laughs> Can you guys connect it to a, a cell phone tower? Yes, yeah, it's cell phone, that's right. How much of a delay is it usually? Uh, anywhere from two to five. Live yeah. from the Scripps Studios, <laughs> this is 10 News. School districts across the nation are bracing for another massive school walkout set for tomorrow morning. Good evening, I'm Kimberly Hunt. And I'm Steve Atkinson. It is another protest over gun violence. But our tennis reporter Allison Ash is live at Hoover High with why this protest will be different. Allison. Yes, yeah, students and faculty here have been working to create an event that they mm -hmm. will have even more it's impact than a walk out. They're calling it a walk in. in. They plan to stay mm -hmm. right here I just on have to make campus, sure no one's in the register to vote, and write letters to lawmakers. What do we want? School safety! When do we want it? Now! These voices the are from students at Rancho Bernardo High, mm -hmm. but the same we're chants were heard sure. across the country last month. Uh, when students yeah. outraged by the Parkland, Florida mass murders walked off campus. I don't want to walk out and half of the kids not know why we're walking out. Hoover High students didn't walk out in March and won't tomorrow. Oh. Instead, choosing to have what they call a meaningful dialogue with lawmakers and a voter registration drive. 
when I went yeah. to school, I never even considered the thought that someone would come onto campus and, and commit the, the terror that, that people have done uh, previously in the last few years. Principal Jason Babineau was an eighth grader 19 years ago when two teens went on a murderous rampage at Columbine High. Columbine. The students he now watches over weren't even born yet. I don't believe that I had the courage that our students have at Hoover High School uh, to, to be able to take a stand, even even for something that is so right. Um, I, I, I commend them. It's been 19 That's years since the first biggest um, school shooting and how it's still going on and it ha nothing has changed. These young people say they and their peers will be the voice of change. Janelle Pareda just turned 18 and can't wait to vote for those who hear her. Honestly, I'm tired of of politicians saying that they're going to do something about it when they're really not doing anything. There you go. Not just ready. So. San Diego Unified isn't openly discouraging students from taking part in the walk-in, but they do say that the rules still apply. And that is, if you leave campus and you don't have a note from home, then it will be an unexcused absence. Reporting live outside Hoover High School, Allison Ash. Wow. Allison, thank you. And you can monitor how tomorrow's walk-in goes by downloading the 10 News mobile app. A free version is now available in the App Store. Well, the man who killed his friend and stuffed her body in his suitcase downtown is going to prison. Today, a jury found Joshua Palmer guilty. 10 News reporter Mimi Alcala shows how Palmer reacted when the verdict came down. After days of deliberation, the jury found Joshua Palmer guilty of first-degree murder with three special circumstances as well. Shauna Haynes' mother and sister sat in the courtroom as that verdict was read. They could be heard crying, but they did not want to appear on camera. But the prosecutor did, and here's what he had to say. They lost Shauna Haynes, a beautiful 21-year-old girl, or a young woman who's no longer with us. And that has affected them and Shauna's friends and family very deeply. It's been two years since Shauna was killed, almost to the day, I, I saw and they've been living with this for two years, and this is their chance to finally see the person who killed their daughter and sister brought to justice. Joshua Palmer sat emotionless in court as that verdict was read. Guilty of first-degree murder, and the jury found three special circumstances to be true. Murder during the course of rape, sodomy, and sexual penetration. I want to warn you that the details of this murder are graphic. Palmer killed Shauna Haynes at the Chadwick Hotel in downtown San Diego after watching her have sex with two other people. Haynes was beaten, choked to death, and raped. Palmer took videos of some of his violating actions. Those were seized from his phone by investigators. And in one of the videos, Palmer is heard saying, I'm sorry, I love you, but I can't watch you have sex with somebody else. Haynes' body was found stuffed in a suitcase and put in the trash. Now, the death penalty was not pursued in this case, but Palmer will be sentenced to life in prison without the possibility of parole. That sentencing is scheduled for June 22nd. Reporting downtown, Mimi Alcala, 10 News. A local middle school teacher is accused of showing pornography in class. We have decided not to reveal his name because he has not been charged with a crime. But students say this happened no. Monday in a oh, gym class oh, at Horace Mann class. Middle School in El Cerrito. A boy told his mom they were expecting to watch a movie when a porn video appeared on the screen instead. We were told it played for about 20 seconds before the teacher was able to press the right button on the computer and shut it off. No. It's disgusting. It's disturbing because they're only like 12, 13 year olds. It's not clear whether the computer used belonged to the school or the teacher. The teacher is now on leave. The school is investigating. Another major setback for a local airline offering service out of Carlsbad. Caljet has canceled all of its upcoming flights for the second time this year. Our attendance reporter Matt Boone talked to travelers who have been forced to scramble at the last minute. Oh. Caljet bills itself as an easy and relatively affordable way to travel from North County San Diego to Las Vegas. But once again, it's turned into a major inconvenience for customers whose flights have been canceled and are now seeking other ways to get to their destination. So next. Kelly Skemp's flight was supposed to leave tomorrow at 2.30, but now she's got a different plan. I'm hoping it'll, it'll be under a five-hour drive, but I have no idea. After looking at flights out of Lindbergh Field, she decided that driving was her next best option. Mm. Still not ideal. I was really excited first time to use them. I thought it was going to just be perfect. But instead, she said perfect. she got a text from Caljet this morning yes. alerting her to the cancellation. I was shocked. 
I really was shocked. I mean, to me, you have a commitment. Not only has CalJet canceled planned flights, they've disabled bookings on their website. A customer service representative said it was due to a lack of aircraft and crew availability. The second time the company has had such a problem. Thank you. Sorry for the delay. That was CalJet CEO George Wozniak back in March after a similar issue forced abrupt cancellations and closure of the airline for nearly two weeks. At the time, he said this to reassure uncertain travelers. We feel very confident going forward that we have the extra crew and airplanes necessary to fulfill that travel mission for these people. But customers like Skemp say that may not be enough to get her business again. I really want to use this local airport, but I just... I've been burned now and I've lost the trust. Steve Carlsbad, Matt Boone, 10 News. And we have reached out to CalJet for a comment. We've yet to hear back. It's unknown when their flights will resume. And we are learning the exact number of San Diegans losing their jobs at Qualcomm. 10 News has got the hold of the official notice letting 1,231 employees know that they are being let go. The letter says the terminations will begin on or around June 19th. Now, we first told you about those layoffs yesterday. The affected workers will get severance packages. Qualcomm stock fell nearly 5% today on the news of those layoffs. A driving rampage leaving residents without a home after a car plowed into an apartment building. I'm Jennifer Dela Cruz in North Park. Police say the 60-year-old hit an electrical box getting onto the 805 southbound from El Cajon Boulevard. He went down the embankment and hit a car on the highway. From there, got off on University Avenue, crashing into two more cars and a pole. He put the car in reverse, tearing through a gas station parking lot and into the apartment building. Residents evacuated in fears that the building would collapse. Someone crashed into your building and the stuff that's under underneath you holding you up is about to fall. The building has four units. Two of them are now unlivable. Police say the driver may have been on drugs. Jennifer Dela Cruz, 10 News. New at 7 o'clock, we are hearing more from the man hit by a car while trying to help a couple in OB. Julio Vasquez is now out of the hospital after suffering a broken leg and road rash. At 6 o'clock, he thanked the public for the help he's received. He also says that he thought his life was over right after he was hit. And by seeing a lot of blood, I thought I was dying for five seconds probably. I had that in mind. Well, I think I just got that on my mind. This is my time. Vasquez was hit last week after pulling over to help a stranded couple. Police say the car that hit him is a 98 or 99 Subaru Outback, similar to this one. Please call Crime Stoppers if you know anything. President Trump is praising San Diego County for opposing California's sanctuary state law. This week, the Board of Supervisors voted to support the president's lawsuit challenging it. And today, Mr. Trump tweeted, thank you, San Diego County, for defending the rule of the law and supporting our lawsuit against California's illegal and unconstitutional sanctuary policies. Meantime, the president is resuming his war of words with Governor Jerry Brown. Yesterday, Brown ordered 400 National Guard troops to fight trans uh, transnational crime, but not do any immigration enforcement at the border. In response, the president tweeted that the troops will, quote, do nothing federal government won't pay for, quote, Governor Brown's charade. I'm Ariel Wessler. New numbers show most San Diego renters are spending more than a third of their income on housing. Forty percent of homeowners are in the same situation. That's the result of the annual Equinox project released today. Michaela Bowling says it boils down to supply and demand. A lot of people say, well, we don't want development in my neighborhood, or we don't want infill development in our neighborhood, but this is actually the solution that's going to allow us to have more affordable units. She says the study revealed the need for more partnerships to bridge gaps and educate the public. The cost of a median single-family home in the county jumped 6.5% from 2016 to 2017. It's now upwards of $605,000. Ariel Wessler, 10 News. Calling people in San Diego County is about to, about to get more complicated. The new area code rules that will impact everyone. Plus, a local institution shutting down after more than 50 years. I couldn't believe it when they told me they were. <laughs> well, the San Diegans who have to find a new place to get their hair done for the first time since the 1960s. And the flowers were delighted today with a little bit of rain. We're expecting a warm-up of pinpoint when is going to peak. And then tonight on 10 News at 11, the use of those e-cigarettes is on the rise among high school students. Right now, local parents are learning about the trend. 
Tonight, the two hidden dangers experts say are overlooked. Wow. Very good. Very good. It's so coordinated. Huh? Any other questions no. before I bring you out to the studio? This is a great job. <laughs> <laughs> you guys, you it's not got, our first time. Got it, you all got it down to the T, huh? It, you can't m make mistakes, huh? <laughs> oh, we can and we do. <laughs> oh, you're sweet. Oh. This is my first yeah. night. Yeah. <laughs> no. <laughs> Don't say that. Okay? It's okay. too perfect, my goodness. They may hire you after. Thank you. Between the three of us, what do we figure? There's like 70 years of TV experience? Yeah. Seriously. <laughs> you guys are all young. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. You took a line. Yeah. Oh wow. Uh, just, just stay behind the cameras, and Lee will tell you where to. Okay. Where to oh, okay. Thank you, sir. Sir. Man, you're Good missing job. one. Uh, Go talk. <laughs> behind the. Oh, behind the camera. Hi. Hello, hello. There are two chairs. Yeah, yeah watch these cameras. Don't move it on. No, it's all right. <laughs> it's okay. I can stand. And the uh, pose. Black yeah. The hardest like part for me is be looking natural as you look and reading at the same time. You know, it's, it's it, you don't look like you're focused on. It's an art. Oh yeah. <laughs> so watch these cameras if you're close to them because oh. they can move. Yeah, they, oh, they move oh. kind of unexpectedly. So. Okay. They take you out. Yeah, that's. Uh, <laughs> Robots. Okay. Her, her shoes can't go. Thirty seconds. <laughs> on those. Can I see? Cords. On the cords. Mm -hmm. oh. It heals if you try to step on the cord, it just starts <laughs> moving. So unfortunately, you won't be able to hear oh, anything yeah. but us talking because there's no overhead audio. Mm -hmm. so. so, fifteen. Camera one. Five seconds. Stand by. Here we go. Stylists in one of San Diego's oldest hair salons are hanging up their shears that to the dismay of longtime customers. Our tennis reporter Amanda Brandeis introduces us to the women in Allied Gardens who've kept it going for decades. Yeah, we have a package or a tape story, like a minute and a half of this story. Ah. Oh, Allied Gardens. Allied Gardens, uh -huh. amazing. It's close to like this one. How does this um, how does this guy know where to go? Uh, Jellic is going to be doing the weather pretty soon, so just so you know, that that's going to be right there. there. Yeah. Well, I have a turn this way. We'll take over. <laughs> She's already applying for a job. the nicest 
warm up here. So for tonight, 40 degrees Ramona, 56 in San Diego, 51 in Carlsbad. And tomorrow we'll see those numbers recovering, going back to the 70s in our inland communities along the coast. Temperatures should average right around 68 degrees. If you are looking for sunny skies tomorrow, maybe sticking around through the weekend, it's going to be lovely 80 degrees Saturday, Sunday, Monday, 79. And then next week, we will start to see more clouds building at night and into the morning as an onshore flow gets stronger. That will start Monday night into Tuesday. Before that, sunny and warmer starting tomorrow. Yeah, getting toasty in these counties. It's going to be beautiful. Perfect weekend. Thanks, Angela. How would you like to stay in the brand new Legoland Castle Hotel before it opens? We're giving away a family four-pack to Legoland and a one-night stay at the hotel. Just watch 10 News at 6 a.m. tomorrow. We'll also give away another set at 6 p.m. Not exactly what you expect to find in the bathroom. Why public toilets in China are now using facial recognition. That's next. Any questions so far? Yeah, any questions? It's kind of neat. <laughs> kind of neat? Yep. <laughs> you know what? We'll switch off. You know what? You take a break and I'll, I'll go you live with Cindy. Do the end of the show? <laughs> as soon as we finish, That's we so have another cool. story. We take a quick break, then we wrap up the show. Okay. As soon as we finish, we'll come and take some quick pictures up here, really, really fast, because we have one more thing we have to do in between, and we got to get everybody on a dinner break. So we'll just take some quick pictures, then we'll go back to the conference room and we can wrap it up in there, okay? Oh, good. Hey, Jack and thank you. Okay, thanks. So, what do you have at Grossmont as far as, do you have a, do you have Grossmont TV? Um, we don't, I'm, in the, uh, the studio class, we have a basic uh, television studio, yeah. green screen, we have three, uh, build up cameras, one robotic, yeah. control room, nice. you know, slide the tape. Yeah. Very nice. And then what about the newspaper? I think we have a newspaper. We have the Griffin. It's I'm called not... uh, it's called the Summit. There's the Summit. Yeah. And we have a radio station too. And you have a radio station. Good. It's so to me, you get everything covered, you get some experience with that. Yeah. Radio is great experience. Yeah. Forty. I mean, first job. I mean I my first job was radio. It teaches you to ad lib. Yeah. I have a question to ask you. Hold on one second. We're almost. <laughs> Sorry. Almost on. Yeah. Thirty. In tonight's fact or fiction, we're talking toilets. A story that you may have seen this week online claims that some public toilets in China are now using facial recognition. This is true, and you're probably wondering why. Here is the answer. It's the toilet paper. People apparently have been using too much. So each person scanning their face gets 15 inches of TP from the dispenser. The sensors in the toilet stalls also alert an attendant if someone has been inside for more than 10 minutes. Okay. Yeah. Got it. Perfect. Thank you. I'm sorry. Go ahead. So is there some way um, we can take a tour of seeing them do the news in the morning? Um, or they don't do it in the morning, morning, but they do it at midday. Oh, so okay. if you want to work through our creative, creative services department, I can get you their number. Okay, I might be interested. And it about. does, they do do, I don't know if they, I know they do a tour. I'm not sure if you actually get to watch the midday news. They used to sometimes. Oh, they're kind of iffy then. Yeah. It depends. That is gorgeous. It's so yeah. cool. Michelle, it's, it's more so than large. we got a KUSI. So. <laughs> you know what? This KUSI sucks.
very nice. <laughs> without cursing. Most people can't. In fact, a new study finds the average American utters their first curse word of the day at 10.54 in the morning. And one in four people curse by nine. Unless you're the only person I know who doesn't curse at all. Huh. So here's an idea. Try to make it one day. Without. One day. Start with one day. <laughs> Start with one day before nine. Goals. <laughs> Goals. 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 <laughs> Uh, we have a couple little things to do, but that's the end of the show. <laughs> Yay! Okay, quick pictures. interns. It's not a whole lot of money. It's great for an intern because you get a paid internship, but it's not a whole lot of money, but it's still part of our budget, and that's a hard thing when it, you have a newsroom and it's you got to pay out all these salaries and everything else, and our budgets are tight as it is. So what that does is it limits us to only two interns, and it makes it really, really competitive. So the two girls who came in that we had this semester, outstanding students and as Ed was just saying one of them just got hired today in Bakersfield which is our affiliates and that's kind of what we do is we try and teach people through the internship here's what you're gonna learn you're gonna learn how what happens on the assignment desk you're gonna learn what happens for with a reporter you're gonna learn what happens with a photographer you're gonna learn what happens with the editors you're gonna sit with the web team you're gonna learn how much work they do to get everything that we do online and social media and you name it you're gonna work a little bit with creative services to see how they work hand-in-hand -hand with our team so the girl uh, what they, they learn so much and then it's kind of like a pipeline we feed in Bakersfield one is one of our affiliates that is within our ownership and so it gives them an opportunity to go to a starters market and get their foot in the door right away. I have a, uh, I have a question, like, do you guys like have like janitorial work and stuff, like cleaning the place? Like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we do. We have uh, we have a crew that comes in that's contracted. It's usually contracted. Oh, mm -hmm. okay. yeah. Yeah, so mm -hmm. yeah. So like what are the different education levels for the main positions? Like what what, are, what is the business really looking for as far as education? Like what degree? It's usually a communications degree. Journalism is good. Uh, Does that have to be bachelor's? Um, it's all bachelor's. You know what? It, it, it just, it really depends. We've had people come in who've had, you know, military experience and may not have finished college or something like that. You know, I've worked with people like that before, uh, but they, they have a great... Um, idea about communications and electronics and, and you know broadcast mm -hmm. because they did that with the military or mm -hmm. writing you know it's a broad background of writing and reading and being able to present yourself in front of people um, all that stuff comes into play but there are so many different jobs and I mean we have 120 employees we have people in sales we have people in creative services we have people on the assignment desk we have editors we have writers we have producers we have photographers we have reporters we have anchors you know but if you can do more than one job that's truly beneficial if you can speak more than one language that's truly beneficial um, if you know how to produce and edit, that's beneficial. I mean, nobody just does one thing anymore. So it's not so much about the degree, while that's important, it's about how you handle yourself in a newsroom. Can you work with other people? Can you, more than anything else, adapt to change? Because technology changes our industry every single day. And the equipment that we came in, when I came into this place 10 years ago, no longer, no longer exists. You know, when I got here, I learned how to edit on a laptop. I mean, that was just unheard of. We were editing with giant machines uh, 10 years ago. Now it's all down to a mobile studio, which is almost essentially this now. So, And a lot of that stuff you have at your own hands. You can go to an Apple store and get the same equipment that we have. Are you mainly using Final Cut here? We Ready? use Final Cut. Okay. Some stations use, um, I forgot the name of it. There's Adobe, Adobe Premiere. There's Adobe Premiere, and then there's one other. Edius. Grass Valley? Grass Valley. But I think that's more of a uh, highly technical directing type thing. 
Um, but there's another there's another source, but um, yeah, Adobe Premiere and Final Cut are the two most popular that are within television stations right now. But yeah, we're up to Final Cut 10 here. So if you edit with that on your own personal computer, you already come in with the knowledge of yeah. that. And I that have, helps. I have Final Cut yeah. on my laptop. <laughs> exactly. So you come in and you tell people on your resume, I have Final Cut 10 experience. I'm proficient in Final Cut 10. My God, that all of a sudden automatically puts you up on it. Okay. Um, when it comes to cameras, uh, what what kind of cameras do you guys? Well, we provide uh, cameras. Um, we usually shoot with Sony's, uh, different styles. The, okay. The what we call the MMJs, multimedia journalists, shoot with the smaller Sony's. Our photographers, uh, who are traditional, shoot with the bigger ones. Um, some of these cameras cost twenty thousand dollars. Some of them cost five thousand. Oh, yeah. They used to cost a lot more than that. <clears throat> Very expensive, very delicate equipment. Mm -hmm. And do you guys train us on how to use, or should we? We already should know how to use it by the time we. No come one's here. expected to know anything when you come in okay. as an intern. We, it's it's advised that you do so you are you have an idea of what's going on, and most people mm -hmm. do because most colleges provide that now. But if you tell people in your application, I'm proficient in Final Cut 10. I'm proficient with this type of camera. Um, I have written for the school newspaper, or I have written whatever, whatever, and you know, writing experience is a big deal. Okay. All those things, they all come into play. Or and, or I'm a member of the debate team. I am a member of the speech and drama club. I am, you know, did this to, or I'm a member of uh, Grossmont TV. I was the anchor for whatever, you know, period of time. I'm the editor for the newspaper. All those things add, not only add to your resume, but give you the experience that you need moving forward. I mean, that, I did all that stuff in high school and college, too. Uh, yeah. Was it pretty easy for you to get into the newscasting? No. Um, it, it took a while. It, you know, I, I remember my wife was in the industry, too, and she got the first job. And we moved from Houston, Texas to little Fort Smith, Arkansas. And for about three weeks, I mean, I, I didn't have a job. I was banging on doors and thinking <coughs> I made the wrong move. I'm not going to find a job. But persistence is the key. Mm -hmm. Keep knocking on doors. Keep telling people I'm here. Uh, letting people know that you know I'm available. I can do this. And and a lot of times we will hire people freelance because they're just available. Mm -hmm. And if you're really good at what you do and you have a great work ethic and you can work with people, we end up hiring those people. It's kind of like the, what Ed was telling you about the intern. She's good at what she does. She listens well. She's easy to get along with. All of a sudden, she becomes an instant recommendation above other people because she's already with our ownership. And we can go, here's a good one. Put her in your market. It's a starter market in Bakersfield anyway. Put her there. Let her learn the ropes there of producing, writing, and editing in a professional uh, aspect. And hopefully, she comes back here one day. Maybe she ends up in LA. Who knows? It's all a matter of just getting your foot in the door somewhere mm -hmm. and then really making it work from there. That's the key. What else? <laughs> Any more questions? I want to, I don't know, I, I want to come up with a question, but I didn't have one right now. <laughs> <laughs> I know I have so many, but it's just like, oh, okay, I'm here in front of you. Well, I have your first That's what it is. My I brain was just Thank you for showing us everything. And I'm glad that you did. You know, it's, it's, it, there's, it, Kim will tell you this too, there's not one of us who didn't try and were not in the same shoes, were in the same shoes you were 20 some odd years ago, and somebody said, sure, I'll come to, I'll, you know, come on in, talk to me, figure out what you want to do. I just spoke at USD the other day, oh, wow. you know, and, and got a chance to talk with all the students there, and it's the same thing, anytime you get an opportunity to kind of get back and let people know what it's all about answer maybe a few questions you never know how you might be able to help them and again this industry as well as anything else is just it's all about connections and people who you know and who might be able to help you or at least advise you in one way or another that's all it takes okay. but start right now in college work for the TV group if you're going to SDSU you're going to transfer in there get on with as many programs as, that, at, that you can with the communication school they have fantastic speakers who come in and talk all the time, not just local TV, but really inspiring um, and uh, educational uh, people from all different realms who will come in. That's the one thing I love most about college, was going to listen to great speakers and stuff like that. Because when you do that, when you do what I do, 
you're really just going and listening to people and telling their stories anyway. Right. Yeah. It's all part of it. Mm -hmm. And taking and putting it down on paper, writing about it. Whether it's just a blog or something like that, at least you're writing, you're learning how to. It's a big key. Real big key. But I think you know, writing for a newspaper is a big thing. Even if you just want to do TV, learning how to write print is as important as what we do in TV right now. Because if you think about everything we do on the web, it has to be print style. Mm -hmm. TV is very different. A story that might be come out of the newspaper, we can take that and condense that into 20 seconds. You know, if there is a story, you know, it depends on how it's told. But we still have to learn how to write like a newspaper because that's what the web is. Right. All of our web copy is just newspaper style copy. So you got to learn how to do that too. Creative writing. Mm -hmm. Magazines, uh, anything online, in any way. It's that same AP style. And photography is a big key too. <laughs> Having an eye and a vision in a visual medium. Yeah, I shoot you all those pictures, yeah. and it, it's. I mean, it's something to cap hard to capture. I mean, yeah. and what I've learned, or from my own techniques, is I just stand back, keep quiet, yeah. snap, snap, snap. I can't be quick about it. Yeah. I mean, some of those pictures I showed you, the, you know. That's how I take them. We live in a day and age right now where still pictures are as popular as they have ever been. I mean, they can capture, you can capture so much. Oh. Um, this is your work? Oh. <laughs> 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 Life proof? It's my bird. That's mm. a hummingbird I took. Wow. Um, I have take some. that picture? Yeah, I've uh, taken pictures, um, some of my photos on there. Yeah. I've, I've, it's, it's just a lot of practice. Yeah, well, and how with I, Instagram know, I'm, now? I'm going to tell you something. What's that? Um, it took me a lot of practice, and I, I got into photography because of my dad. Mm -hmm. and, you know, I like taking pictures in high school and this and that, and that camera's changed. Mm -hmm. And not only that... The way the social media is now, mm -hmm. I do not post my personal pictures on there. I keep them private, just like the pictures of you and us. I just, I just, that's just me. I keep it private. You know, I have a right to my privacy. You know, that's yeah, but you me. know what? You got to think about some of these things. Some of your work, you never know whose attention it might capture. Uh, yeah. yeah. You know, true. if you think about it, you were at that sinkhole the other day. What if you got something that someone else didn't, didn't get? What if he? I wouldn't. I mean, um, citizen journalism right now is bigger than it's ever been, and that's because we can't be everywhere, but we have to be everywhere, which means we're relying on our viewers sometimes to give us stuff. It's me. That I've of. I've helped you guys uh, well a lot because like throughout the years I've always been sending in like whenever I see news happening, mm -hmm. I send it in through you guys, and then you guys showed it like I don't know a lot of times. What did you send in? Well. Angelica can't, you know, um, the <laughs> weather pictures, the weather pictures, yeah. um, there was an accident on the freeway that you guys showed, um, there was a typhoon that hit the Philippines, my dad took a picture of it, yeah. and he sent it to me, and then from me I sent it to How you. How about the, uh, and the, is it the airplane that hit the car? On the That's some of my work. I was there. Yeah, she okay, took, she on took a picture of, the, yeah. of a plane crash. You never know. She sent it to me, mm -hmm. and then I think you guys broadcasted it. I like my work. We do that. So, we we yeah. do that quite a bit. We'll share yeah. with that, and we'll give you courtesy for it. Yeah. But uh, you know, if you if you have something in particular that's incredibly newsworthy, uh, worthy, like especially like the typhoon in the Philippines or something like that, yeah. um, that it, it comes from a. Um, from an individual that's not, you know, that's not necessarily, you know, with a news corporation or something, yeah. Mm -hmm. That's big stuff. You like know? Skype call, like someone who is in... Exactly. My dad is there, dad and, you know, there. hey. Would you like to talk to him? Exactly. Yeah. Yeah, we survived it. We did this, you know, because you... I mean, not Those are the stories that matter. Remember, Jian, we did the tsunami in Japan. We sent some... some oh, well, you were there? I was, um, no, I lived in Hawaii we when the tsunami there. in Japan... Yeah. Um, happened, I and we that. I was evacuated with my dad, <laughs> oh, and really? we went uphill. Um, so I, well, well, that was me. Um, I was still little, but that was I, amazing. Yeah, time. that, that was, was a. I've never seen anything like yeah. that. Yeah, and I'm We were on set at eleven o'clock when that happened. Oh, okay. oh wow. And
and they had helicopters flying over. And I remember we were sitting on the set with our geologist who came in as an expert. We had like, it happened like 45 minutes before the show. So there was plenty of time to get him in and there was, it was morning in, in Japan. And I remember just seeing this giant black mm -hmm. wall coming through and I, it didn't register in my mind until the jealous just was saying that's water and debris oh that all that is if you know if you look closer those are giant logs from trees that have in cars it was just amazing how it was just just taking over fields it was just it was fascinating so yeah that kind of stuff those kinds of goes a long way breaking news. <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah. I need to ask you something um, so if I want to send some of my photos in how about do I do that? Pictures, the weathers? pictures at 10 newscom I think yeah, it's, that's it's the on our website. They have a link. Yeah. So I think it's pictures at 10 newscom but I think it's yeah, you can find all that information on our website. And Angelica you just picks at random. All the weather people pick at random and they right. give you courtesy for it. Sometimes they use it for that, sometimes we use it within the newscast if it's important, you know. Um, those pictures of the um, sinkhole, I'm going to probably give a copy of that to the Helix Water District because mm -hmm. to me that's, you can't get that close. Mm -hmm. They probably won't let you, but you have to be careful. Yeah, yeah. She went really close to the sinkhole. Like there, there was no, <laughs> no barrier separating, yeah. and there was there wasn't that anyone telling us to go away. Well, I was going to say, how, yeah. why am I the sitting down at the bottom of this sinkhole? I was like, man, you were like almost on top of it. Across from like, you know what I told him? I said, let's build a sinkhole. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but there's yeah. yeah, but there were other channels there too, so yeah. we got to meet yeah. them. Yeah. Uh, okay. But Mimi left like right when I we know. I want to meet her so bad. She's always bundled up when I watch it every morning. She's tired of things. She has to. It's cold. The it is. Yeah. But yeah, I want to start getting out there, you know, my photography out there so people can notice me because that's what I do. That's why it's just just create an Instagram account. Just see what happens. Oh, I have some of my pictures on Instagram. Are you so, on are you on Instagram? Mm -hmm. yeah, okay. What am, what am I? Then I'll take uh, Steve. No, no, no. You something else. Steve Atkins and stuff. Steve Atkins and stuff. Yeah. Okay, well, I'll tag on Instagram and I'll show you some of the photos I have. Um, at school they did, um, what is it, that 9-11, mm -hmm. and they had a fire truck, and it brought down the flag on yeah. the ladder with this three fire, wait, five or six firemen. Really? But he went to class, but I captured the picture, yeah. and it's on my Instagram. Uh, Laura Acevedo covered that story. Yeah. yeah uh, the 9-11 ceremony. Yeah. Yep. I don't remember that. It was, like, it, was like, it was like last year. Mm -hmm. yeah. You yeah. never know what happens. There's always stuff that happens always you something. may get that we, we can't get, and you just never know. You never know. Maybe something we can use one day. Just be ready to shoot all the time. Oh, yeah, yeah. I, I, I have my phone ready. That's what it is. Being, <laughs> yeah, being yeah aware I always carry time. my cameras, and usually when it comes to a photographer, you have to carry one or more camera in case one breaks, because you exactly. never know. Or like, well, we have our photographer who has a camera, each one of us has this, you know, and sometimes we've had, a photographer's been in the truck editing and a very important interview is available. He can't get away from the truck, he's got to finish the edit to make mm -hmm. deadline and the reporter will go over and record just with this mm -hmm. wow. I mean, and send that back. I mean, that's, it's, it has changed our industry dramatically. Some people, you know, it's like, like you said, some people's like, how, how can you get that? You know, that's impossible, but you know, Sometimes I'm lucky, sometimes I'm creative. Yep, and sometimes no, we're lucky. And sometimes we rely on our viewers to be lucky yeah. for us. Uh -huh. We need your material as much as as anything else you never know. Right. Yeah. All right, I uh, have to yeah. get to another um, yes. um, uh, meeting. Could I have an autograph? Yes. Thank you so Did much. I, do you have a, is that a Sharpie? Yeah. yeah. Oh, Can you sign this one to this mic flag? Is that? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Where'd you get this? I got it from Amazon. <laughs> G-I-A-N-N? Yeah. So, um, yeah, yeah. Steve, what is that? What is it's, a, it's for the microphone. The, it, the logo oh, goes on right. it. Oh, that's right. Don't forget yeah. to have them date it. <laughs> you want me to date it? Sure. <laughs> so, I was going to ask you if you want any of these pictures. I will give you copies of them. <laughs> <laughs> He's not From really. 1997. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> I took these ones. Yay, Kuya, you got those. Okay. You got the from Amazon. Gian has one of these. Do you guys want one? Uh, yes, sure. I'll have one, please. Thank you. J A R E D. J A R O D. Yeah. Odd. Uh, I didn't care. Uh, 
man. So do you guys sell the news ten? Do you sell news ten T-shirts? Um, we don't sell them. We give them away, but I don't think we have any. Darn it. <laughs> All right, Jim. M-I-C-H-E-L-L-E, right? Right. Thank you so much. You got that one now. So is there some way I can give you, um, maybe I can give you these pictures? <laughs> Through the website. Through the link, uh, Michelle. Yeah, you can send Michelle. them to me by email. Oh, by That's email. always the best thing. Here you go, Jerry. You're welcome. Yay. Um, Even, so what you guys have a good time? Yeah. Yes. Yes. What time do you get to work and what time do you leave? I Today I got in at wow. 1.30. Michelle. Uh, Michelle, you can take the bag. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh. yeah. Okay. The whole bag is yours. The whole bag is for, the, um, for your classmates. Okay. I, today I got in at 1.30 because I had an interview okay. with Ben Hueso. Um, that? Senator Ben Hueso. Oh, okay. Senator. About the Salton Sea, a story that we're doing on the Salton Sea. Normally oh. I don't get in until about 3. Um, for the for the late night. Yeah, and then we go on till eleven thirty. I get home about midnight, so we have this time to write other stories, eat a little dinner, catch up on email, you okay. know, whatever. So there's this short little window that we have to kind of do. So whatever. no dinner for family. Usually you're. Here. Oh no no no. Mm -hmm. Oh boy. Sometimes, occasionally, there used to be a lot more time for that, but now there's just again. More with less, Sharpie so we're doing that. so much more than Thank we you. ever have done in for the past. Sure. Usually yeah. there was a longer time for a break, but now it's, mm -hmm. like I've got a story that I'm working on okay. that I need to prep for that, because um, I'll be out all day tomorrow doing so that, gotta do so I've got to prep for that. Friday, for Saturday? Uh, for Friday, tomorrow it's, tomorrow. Um, and then we'll run it later in May. Yeah, it's a, oh, wow. It's a ratings piece. So how often do you guys get breaks, like, like, a day off or maybe oh Saturday vacation. Sunday oh. Oh, but like off? this Sunday I'm doing the March of Dimes walk in Oceanside uh, okay. so I'm out there early in the morning doing that and that's kind of part of a, what we do in our contracts and you know being part of the community is is uh, being out going to the science expo so shows. Okay. yeah, I remember yeah. I remember. Um, and then going and doing these walks there's the one other one that if there's the walk in Oceanside Sunday the following Saturday there's a walk in Balboa Park um, last weekend I, I did um, for the Navy SEAL Foundation, Family Foundation, I was an EMC for their very gala. Uh, so mm -hmm. it's not it's not hard stuff, but it's stuff that kind of creeps in on the weekends or the mornings or things like that. You know what, I Part should ask, because yeah. I don't know, I have like severe asthma, and I'm wondering if they have like an asthma watch or something. I don't, you know, I don't know they're if they're doing that. I mean, we have just about everything. Mm, cool. Yeah. All right. Wow. You got to eat. You got to eat. Thank you. Thank you for Bye. coming. Very, Thank very you informative. so much. Well, it's going on now. Oh, yeah. You know, you, so you have to have, and you have to have all these people assigned to specific duties, but some people are producing, some people are writing it. Mm. You know? Um, and it all it comes together in one big piece. Um, you know, just if, if you if think about it, 120 people to put on seven hours of news a day. You know, yeah. from what, from actually putting it on to selling it to managing it. You know, that's all we do, seven hours a day of work. You know, uh, but it's a 24-hour business. We see. I'm never at 11:30, and the people who work on the morning show, they come in at 10 o'clock. 